the first time King Crimson played Friars, I think you were about 11, so you wouldn't have come to that. It I didn't see the first lineup, no. <laughs> that was in 1969, um, on the 28th of July 1969. It was in our very first club, which had a little capacity of about 400. And in that whole year, uh, the King Crimson night was the most populated in terms of we sold more tickets for that than any other gig. And that was obviously in the Greg Lake period. Um, but it was just an astonishing show, yeah, and, and ending with Mars and mm. all that sort of, those sort of classic uh, King Crimson tracks. And then the second time we put them on was at Watford Town Hall in 1971 on the 15th of July. And I think that was the first time you'd ever seen King Crimson? Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, a, I was an enormous fan by then, and um, it was probably only about the third gig I'd ever been to. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I think there was a bit of a story about uh, how you nearly didn't get there oh. or something. <laughs> well, yeah, in, I, was at, uh, I guess I'd still be... It's, it's just before school would have broken up, I should imagine. So uh, I'd been at school that afternoon, and there's a bit of rough ground that separated the playing fields of the secondary school from the primary school. And I fell over in that rough ground, and I landed on a milk bottle, and I... Uh, I, I mean, I, it was a really bad cut. I could see the bone and everything. Um, and so the, there were two main concerns. One, I thought my mum would go nuts because I'd ripped my trousers. And two, I was going to the King Crimson gig, you know. So I ended up in the, um, the um, accident and emergency ward at uh, the Peace Memorial Hospital. And then I just stayed there because it's literally around the corner from, uh, from the town hall. So you got dressed, you got this... Got dressed, stitched and, up, yeah. And then didn't tell your mum and just went to the gig? Yeah, no, I, the, 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 the fear that she might stop me going because I'd uh, had several stitches in my knee was, uh, was too, too much of a risk to take. Yeah. And can you remember about the concert? Can you remember any of the details? Oh, yeah, I mean, loads of things. I mean, I remember thinking... It was very dramatic. It was funny, too. There was moments of humour. Um, I remember the drummer Ian Wallace, who, who I subsequently played with, um, because they were, it's because it was, uh, they used to use it for orchestral concerts, so there was that kind of stepped kind of thing at the back, which I guess was for players and stuff. And I remember him going up to the back and in the middle of his drum solo, throwing sticks and hitting the kit, and uh, the kit was going through all sorts of kind of weird, like the VCS3, I think, that Pete Sinfield was operating out front. And yeah, it was, it, was inc it, was, it was all of the music that I loved. It was, it, it was mysterious, it was exciting. In my tiny teenage head, it was a significant moment that I kind of over-romanticised over the years as, as something that would have an enormous impact. Um, and actually, in the end, it really did, so. Uh... Fantastic. And of course, that was after um after Lizard, wasn't it? And yeah. after uh, In the Wake of Poseidon. Yeah, they were promoting Islands, the album Islands. Right, but that came out actually after that gig. I think yes, I think it December. did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you remember any of the other, any of the other tracks that... Uh, uh, well, they, uh, yeah, they played, they, well, they definitely played Schizoid Man, they played Pictures of a City, they played, um, they played Circus off of, off of, uh, off of Lizard, and they played, um, Lady of the Dancing Water, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, it's, I'm very proud to have been a part of your history in presenting that gig. Right. And, and when I first saw them uh, in 71, Mel was in the band and, and was very imposing as a player. I thought he was brilliant. And in fact, the, 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 he was either side of the stage with Robert. And for me, you know, he was as much about Crimson as Robert was back then. He, I, I thought he was amazing. And I've always loved his playing. Um, so it was a real thrill to work with him. I worked with him in the, the, the schizoid band and then and we've done a lot of work since. In fact, we did, um, we did a couple of duo gigs, just the two of us. We did a show in, in uh, Venice. Mm -hmm. Just a little thing, but that was great. He, no, he's brilliant, Mel. And, um, and he plays a lot in this. Robert loves his playing, so you know, he does the majority of the solo stuff, uh, the solos of Mel, and he's, he's on fire, he's fantastic. Fantastic. Of course, he played Friars in the past in Camel yeah. three times, and everybody's very excited about this being the first time yeah, yeah. since the Camel. No, he's great. Uh, and he's played for everybody, Mel. You know, his yeah. CV is extraordinary. 